time with us. First of all, I encourage you, make yourself comfortable. Join in on the singing. We hope that just as you interact with people, you're encouraged, that the Word of God would be encouragement to you, and you would be able to say it's good to be in the house of the Lord along with the rest of us, right? We're going to go and continue with uh, worship, and Colin's going to read some scripture. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I see... I have seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and your glory because your glove for because your love is better than life my lips will glorify you I will, I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands All right let's pray God thank you so much for your word um, God let us praise you during this time um, Let us just be thoughtful and aware of all you've done for us, the blessings you have lavished onto us, both in a real physical way in this world, but uh, most importantly in an eternal spiritual way, of which what you accomplished for us on behalf of us through your son, Jesus Christ. Um, let us just reflect on that and the goodness of the Lord and the faithfulness of the Lord um, and how that faithfulness and that love and that goodness endures not just through this moment, but as scripture tells us, forever. It endures uh, forever. So I pray this morning that souls would be encouraged, that we would be enlightened this morning from the word of God, um, that we'd be encouraged by each other and by your spirit, that you would accomplish great things as we worship together this morning. It's in your name we pray and all God's people say, amen. Let's worship.
answers to his physical ailments. Dear God, thank you for Jerry, Brother Jerry, continuing to recover well. Pray that that would continue. We just want to praise you this morning that Sister Marcia is at home and ask that you would be with her as she continues to recover and, and Wayne and the family as they care for her. We want to praise you for the great news that Sister Van Bilby got uh, from her biopsy. Again, praise you this morning for uh, the news we got back from Allie that the lump uh, is gone, dear God, and we just give you all the praise and glory for that. We thank you for all the opportunity to serve you uh, and minister uh, for you and on behalf of you both in this church and uh, in our community, dear God, and just opportunities to be your light and your salt. Uh, we just ask you to be with us as we dig into the Word of God this morning uh, and try to apply it in a really practical way. It's in your name we pray, and everybody says amen. You guys can be seated. We'll dismiss the kids to Kids Church. I do want to kind of add to, we have a lot of praise items we mentioned there in prayer this morning. Uh, also, we're having a baptism next week. Uh, little Madison is getting baptized next week. So if you're needing to be baptized, if you've given your life to Christ and never been baptized, we, uh, we are going to do one next week. So next week is a great time uh, to do that. We had um, two really good things. We had food ministry this Thursday, and that went really well and was able to give some good food out to some people in need. Thank you for all the people that helped uh, with that. Um, also, this week, an answer to prayer, Brother John, uh, most of you know Brother John, he got his apartment this week, and so got to move into his apartment, so that was an answer to prayer, and that all worked out, so we're excited uh, for John as well. Um, and then uh, one other thing I want to say, and I hope I got this date right, and if they're watching online, they can say yes or no, but we won't hear them. Uh, but I believe today is Charles Boggs' birthday uh, today. Um, and Charles and, and uh, Shirley are at home, and, and Charles uh, is really staying at home most of the time there, uh, Shirley is, and, and Charles for sure. But he's mentioned to me uh, the last time I visited with him, uh, growing up, going to church his whole life, this will be the first time that his birthday has fallen on a Sunday that he's not been at church uh, on that Sunday. And, and so we're going to stop for just a second, okay? And we're going to sing happy birthday uh, to Charles, okay? Uh, and so everybody stand up. You can't stand, you can't sing sitting down. And if you have a birthday as well, well, just enjoy this. We'll pretend this is to you, okay? Gina, will you start us on that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Charles. Happy birthday to you. Good stuff. You guys can be seated. That's really good. I'm not sure if Charles has, is that two syllables or one, but we charles that one, didn't we? Charles. Okay. Anyway, that's really good. Uh, hey, just want to make you aware of a couple things. Hanging of the Greens is two weeks away. Um, that means Thanksgiving's rolling up on us in about a week and a half. Um, but next Sunday, 5 p.m., we will get all the hanging of the green stuff down. And, you know, we kind of fluff up the garland and get it all set. But also, that's a great night. We want you to bring your kids, and especially if they're older kids, helping with hanging up stuff. Um, we want them to be here that night so we can kind of practice through that and make sure that that goes uh, really well. Um, I know I saw Annie and Merritt at the table uh, out there in the lobby. We appreciate them, especially the sweet goodies that they're bringing uh, for us to eat. Um, but also, just to let you know, they're kind of helping with the directory and our app because uh, the app that you can get actually has a directory on it, and you can completely control what inf personal information you want on there, and the only people that can access that uh, are people in our church that we give permission to. Um, and so it's just a great way to know people's faces if you're like, I see them every week. Uh, and so you can add pictures and things like that to them as well. But So be sure to go by there, whether it's information about the director or making sure we have your correct information. Um, you'd be able to ask Annie and them um, about that um, as well. Book clubs tonight, right? Book club tonight, 6 p.m. Uh, and so if you've been reading that book, be sure to be there tonight, 6 p.m. here at the church. If you're like, I haven't read this book, but I want to jump in on the book club, they're going to keep doing that, keep reading. Um, show up tonight and hear what they're going to talk about because I think it's going to be a series of things, but I, I'm not making the decision uh, for them. Um, and then I've got a message here. Uh, Ella Catherine's on her way. Please join us to celebrate this sweet girl diaper and wipe shower. Um, uh, additional items can be purchased from an Amazon registry if desired. 
Uh, this is Morgan's new baby coming, and that's December 3rd at 4 p.m. And so we just want to announce that to you guys. I think that's all the announcements I'm going to go over right now. You guys grab your Bibles and turn to Romans 12, chapter 2. This is really the base verse of what we're talking about. Um, and I mentioned to you last week we're gonna, that, that this week is uh, what the Bible says about cannabis. Um, and I got to tell you, I, I'm fully expecting most of you to be completely disappointed with what I say here today. Um, and uh, some of you are like, man, I wish you would have said more. And some of you are going to say, man, I wish you would have said less. Um, I doubt I'm going to nail this just perfectly. Okay. Um, and so if we were uh, doing a message on, let's say, uh, modesty, and I nailed that, you probably wish I'd have said more or said less. Um, I think it's, it's kind of difficult when you're dealing with very specific behaviors um, that the Bible addresses specifically or generally. Um, it can be that case as well. All we know is that we serve a holy God that wants us to draw us closer to him um, and also that we are covered by grace, right, as followers of Christ. And so we're going to dive into this idea, uh, beginning with Romans 12, 2. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We talked about this last week, and this is really the beginning point of this series that we're doing on experimental, things that the world is throwing at us that we need to filter through, that we need to test and approve constantly. And the reason we need to do that is, is because the world is searching for purpose and meaning. But without Christ, they will never find true purpose and meaning. So that search is constantly changing, and the focal point is constantly changing. So this verse is telling us that we're not to be molded to what the world is doing or trying to uh, push on us, but we're supposed to be transformed by renewing our minds. In other words, the way we think on things, what Christ is doing internally, and then going outward. It goes on to say that we're supposed to test and approve what comes our way so that we can know the will of God versus the whims of man. That we have to figure those things out. What are the whims of man or the will of man? And what is the will of God? And we're constantly testing and approving those things and figuring out what is good for me and what is not good for me. I remember uh, growing up and, you know, when you're a little kid, you always want, like, you see candy and you think, oh, it's going to be good, right? So you uh, toss candy in your mouth. I told you the stories about uh, grabbing cooking chocolate and chunking that in my mouth when I was a kid, when I was searching through the cabinets when my parents would leave, and, and that wasn't a good experience. The other terrible experience, I was looking at something, and it looked like a normal stick of gum. And I thought, ooh, I like gum, sweet, I like chewing gum. It was called blackjack gum, if I remember correctly. Ever had blackjack gum? It's the devil is what it is. It's the devil, okay? And I toss that blackjack gum in my mouth, and it's like, imagine uh, like black licorice, but they took anything whatsoever sweet in it and added twice as much bitterness. It's just a terrible gum. And I remember chewing that thinking, is this going to get better? Is this going to get better? No, it did not get better. All throughout life, we're doing this, right? We're figuring out what's good for us in a real practical, what I enjoy, and what is not good for us. And here, uh, the Apostle Paul is encouraging us to constantly test and approve from a spiritual, eternal kingdom perspective what is good for us, what is going to guide us into the will of God, because he says here it's good, pleasing, and perfect. In other words, it's complete, it's mature, it's morally honorable, it's beneficial to us and those around us, it's acceptable and well-pleasing to God. So we're constantly testing, approving, approving things, not from a moral superiority, check me out, look how perfect I am, that's not what scripture teaches, but so that we might know and live out the will of God. So we're going to dive into this idea of what does the Bible say um, about cannabis. Let me begin by saying I have no axe to grind here, okay? I'm not losing money or gaining money on the cannabis industry, okay? There's no win or loss for me in that sense in a practical. I hope the world, uh, we have uh, uh, agreed in Oklahoma or voted in the idea of medicinal uh, marijuana or cannabis, um, I hope the world continues to find life-saving, improving elements, whether it's in plants or whatever it happens to be. I don't have any axe to grind in that way, 
uh, as well. I don't do sermons about what medicine to take, by the way. You'll not hear me say that, and I would encourage you not to come and ask me about certain medicines you should take. Uh, Those decisions are between your doctor, their conscience, knowledge, and wisdom, and you, your conscience, knowledge, and wisdom. The Bible speaks about medicine uh, and that there are people who are sick and they have a need for a physician. Matthew 9, 12 says, But when he heard it, he said, Jesus, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. What is Jesus alluding to? That there are sick people, there are well people, and there are physicians that help them out. 1 Timothy 5, 23, Paul is speaking to Timothy. He says, no longer drink only water, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. What is Paul saying? There are things that we can take that actually help us. They are medicines for us. So we are not a a group that believes that we stay away from doctors or we stay away from medicine. So if the doctor prescribes uh, insulin, uh, aspirin, uh, benazapril, uh, any of these others, including green beans or or uh, Brussels sprouts, I don't encourage the Brussels sprouts, um, whatever hap- that is between you and your doctor. That is not the direction that this sermon I- is going. This is not coming from any anger about dispensaries or, or neighborly grow houses that we have in our world. <laughs> but it's com- here's where it's coming from, okay? So if you wanted me to come up here and make some kind of election uh, uh, season, Uh, sermon or yelling about something, you're not going to hear that from me today. It's simply coming from hearing people reference um, cannabis and the use of it and reference God and Scripture as to a reason or an allowance for it. And I just wanted to clear some of those things up. Uh, There are many things that the Bible addresses, and there's many things that the Bible does not address uh, in life. It is all we need for faith and practice, right? But there are all sorts of things we have to learn in life and and wade through and sift through, which Romans is speaking of, that is not directly mentioned in Scripture, but many times there are principles in Scripture that can absolutely uh, guide us. So let's dive into this. A few will hit three things that I've heard people say in reference to using cannabis as a reason, and then uh, a couple of principles that can guide us in this uh, as well. First of all, spoiler alert, it doesn't mention cannabis, okay? So if you've been reading, you've thought, I'm going to read all through Scripture this week, and I'm going to find out if the Word of God mentions cannabis, it does not. If you Google, does the Bible mention cannabis, you might have seen some hits that said that it does. So let me tell you what they're referring to. In Exodus chapter 30, 22 through 29, they reference a plant called a kinabosom plant. Um, and they take that sound of kenabosum that sounds a little bit like cannabis, uh, and they think maybe that is a mention of cannabis. But kenabosum, uh, they will say it was mistranslated, literally means sweet reed. It's a water reeded plant. It is translated in some scriptures the calamus. It, it was a known plant at that time, the andropogon calamus aromatics plant. And it was used for oils and incense. It's mentioned a few times in the Old Testament. As soon as I read this, that people were saying, maybe that's um, uh, mentioned of cannabis. I thought of a scene from my big fat Greek wedding. Uh, when the dad on the big, big fat Greek wedding thinks every, every word that ever existed came from Greek the Greek language, and so he's being challenged, and there's an incident in a car where he's, he's there, and there's some teenage girls, and they ask him a question, and he thinks through it, and he, he goes through this kind of sounds-like moment. Yes, see, that it, everything comes from Greek. It's a similar thing. It's a bit of a sounds-like, but the Bible does not mention um, cannabis, and you might say, well, maybe it doesn't mention because they didn't know about it. No, we, uh, cannabis has been around for a really long time. Uh, And the use of it and the knowledge of it has been around for a really long time. The Bible does not mention it. So that's the first thing. You might read something that says that was a mistranslation. That is a mess, Um, a dumpster fire, you might say, uh, of of, uh, analysis of Scripture. Second thing uh, that I've heard before, God made it, so cannabis must be natural and good. God made it, so cannabis must be natural and good. Genesis 1, 11 and 12, then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to the various kinds. And it was so. 
And the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. Genesis 129, then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. What do we know? That everything that existed on the earth after creation, God created it, right? Uh, And God looked at all of his creation from us to the universe, to the planet, to the oceans, to the animals that live inside of it, to all the plants that he placed on it. And he said, it is good. He looked at his creation. Man, this is a great job. And I would say we would echo that, right? You just look around the world and you go, man, how amazing is the world that he created? Uh, so we would say, apart from the fall, some, some would argue that it was through the fall that cannabis came about. I read that in one little location. There's no evidence of that in Scripture whatsoever, uh, that if cannabis was there in the beginning, that plant, God made it. He called all that he made was good, but he did not call all that he made good for consumption. That's a completely different thing. Brussels sprouts are a perfect example of that. And he did not call all that he made good for everyone to consume, right? There are things that your body is allergic to that causes you problems. So yes, he did call all that he made good, but that is not the same thing as saying he called all that he made good for consumption. Examples of this, other than Brussels sprouts, would be opium and hemlock, okay? There's all sorts of natural poisons in the world that would have been a part of the creation uh, moment that are not good for consumption. So when we hear the argument, well, God made it, so it must be okay for me to consume or take in, that is a terrible argument. There's no good foundation in that whatsoever because God made all sorts of things that are not good uh, for you to consume or to eat and maybe not, especially not good for your uh, system. The first church I lived at, or lived at, worked at, uh, the pastor, Kent Hubbard, had a little, uh, uh, what do you call the little wiener dogs? There's a, there's, a, there's a name for them. Dachshunds. Yeah, I had a little dachshunds, and, and the dachshund had this little blanket, and, and uh, the dachshund would chew on that blanket. If you've read a dog, you know that uh, dogs chew on things, right? And pretty soon, the, the little rubber ball that you bought them is just kind of a half moon. You know what I'm saying? What they didn't know is the dog wasn't just chewing it apart systematically. It was actually swallowing the stuff from that blanket, and it was not uh, uh, processing that, and it began to just, it was just growing in its stomach, and it caused major health problems uh, for that dog, whereas most other dogs consume things, and then you find it later on in the yard with other things you need gloves to pick up. This dog did not have the ability for some reason, or there's something in that blanket that it was not good for it to consume. I was actually downtown one day and talking to someone, and, and uh, you know how it is. You're walking around anywhere these days, and there's a dispensary there. And, and so I parked in front of a dispensary. And the only reason I parked in front of the dispensary is because I needed to get some stuff in there. No, I'm teasing. Uh, I just, it was the parking spot, okay? It was the parking spot. So I parked in front of the dispensary, okay? And they're like, ah, I see you. I was like, no, 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 no. And they said, hey, God made it, so it must be good. And I was like, and that was, my, that was one, of, I've heard that before, and I thought, man, I'm hearing that more and more and more. I want to point out the flaw of that. Yes, God did see his creation and saw that it was good. And he also created all sorts of other things in creation, not just plants, but, but animals that can be harmful to us, right? Now, not a lot of uh, pet sharks or cobras or vipers or, or other things that are just, you know, not good for you to have in your home, like cats. And no, I'm teasing guys, cats. Next argument, God made us, we were designed for it. This is a little bit more of a rare one because you'd have to know a little bit of, of the science to know that. Genesis 1, 27 says, So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created them, male and female he created them. So absolutely, God created our bodies and all the intricacies of our bodies. And we're finding out more and more and more. There was a time we thought the cell was the most basic unit of life. And now we realize the cell is broke down into just just smaller pieces, and those smaller elements are broken down and have parts uh, within them. 
Psalm 139, 14 says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Our bodies are amazing things. And anytime I dive into some of this stuff and I learn more and more about how our body works, I'm just blown away. So let me dive into this. Yes, God made our bodies. And we absolutely have the ability to take in some of the effects, whether it's uh, 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 consumed or, or smoked or vaped, some level of uh, something from cannabis. And within our bodies, we have a neurological system. So we have a brain, our spinal cord, and our nerves. And these nerves communicate uh, in a very intricate and detailed and complex way. I'm going to try not to get into the weeds here, uh, but just to answer this question. Gina's smiling at me like, let's see how this goes. Anyway, um, but it's a fascinating thing. Do you remember the old game, the phone game, where you would say something right to somebody, and they would tell the next person and the next person and the next person, and then you'd see what it says. You know, you're saying, hey, uh, uh, my mom is the best mom ever, and at the end it says, my mom is a vampire. You know what I'm saying? It kind of changes over time. Um, your brain and spinal cord and nerves communicate to each other. They, they are not directly connected, but it is this microscopic uh, distance between one nerve and the next nerve, the cells, whether it's in your brain, spinal cord, or the nerve endings, uh, and they connect by way of, chem- or they communicate by way of chemicals. One nerve will release a chemical, sometimes called a neurotransmitter, and that chemical will go to the next nerve, and it will tell that nerve how to function or what to do next. So when somebody, uh, maybe in service today, you sit next to your wife or your husband, and, and you laugh at something you're not, they didn't want you to laugh at, and they pinch you on the arm, okay? The nerve right there is, is going to do that. It's going to communicate all the way back to your brain, and your brain's going to tell you, somebody just pinched you. I'm pretty sure it's your wife, and it hurt a lot. And the brain's going to communicate that back to that little arm and say, pretend that hurts. You're going to respond with these pain receptors. It goes on constantly. It affects how we feel. It affects our mood and our emotions. Uh, I once took a class called Physiological Psychology. I told this to the students. I thought it was going to be, Ron looks that way, uh, that should tell me something about his brain. I thought it was going to be like the way we look, physiological, this is the way serial killers look, this is the way, you know, librarians look, that kind of thing. It was not. It was all the neurological system. Our final was pencil on the desk, blue book, which you wrote your essays in, and the question was, uh, pick up the pencil and begin uh, um, answering the question, what has to go on in your brain to pick up that pencil? That was the final. And it was basically all this stuff, and I didn't have a clue what to write down. Anyway, uh, but it was just a fascinating, it was a fascinating look into the neurological system. Okay, now people will say God made us a certain way, so we're designed for uh, cannabis, specifically the chemicals uh, from cannabis. The ones most well-known is THC and CBD. Um, These have psychoaffective uh, elements in them. There are over 70 Um, psychoaffective chemicals found within cannabis, over 400 biological elements found within cannabis. So when somebody takes that in, there are a lot of things going on. And what they found as a result of studying marijuana use is that your nerves have these receptors that receive neurotransmitters or chemicals from one nerve to the next. And there are specific receptors that THC, CBD, that cannabis uses. They call them CB1 and, and CB2 because they, they were researching cannabis. Um, and, and so people go, look, God put within us cannabis receptors designed for us to take in cannabis. We were made to take this in. I've only heard this once, and then I looked it up, and I found other people saying this same thing. What they found later on in researching this, that the body already has chemicals, neurotransmitters that use those receptors and because they were studying cannabis and they called those cb1 get it cannabis cb1 and cb2 receptors they referred to the uh the chemicals or the neurotransmitters um as cannabinoidal or endogenous cannabinoids in other words neurochemicals that accomplish the same thing but they they put the title on them as cannabinoids okay so some people will hear that that you actually have that in your body and go, see, God already put cannabis in your system. The reality is they are not the same thing. Cannabis does a job of regulating, exciting, or depressing your nerves. That's what it does. So it has a major physiological effect on someone when they take cannabis. I was really nervous the whole day 
when I was doing this, I was going to say it has a neurological effect on me. I was going to personalize this, and that was going to be out there on the Internet. I'm working really hard not to say that. Um, and so it, it regulates the nervous system, which, which affects so many other things in our life. And what they found is, they didn't mention the word God, but since we understand who created us, God actually already put the chemicals in our body to regulate our system. It's already there. It exists. Now, science has put cannabinoid on, on those things, on the receptors and the chemicals, but they didn't look microscopically at the, at the manufacturer's label. And see, cannabinoid, they just put that title on there, but some people will take that and make it sound like we were designed. God designed this for this, and that couldn't be further um, from the truth. We do have receptors that receive it, and it does affect us. Uh, cannabis impacts our mental faculties and, and our neurological system, and it has effects in motor skills, um, speech. Most of these are not in good ways, by the way. Um, memory, sexual function, increased anxiety, increased chance of depression, uh, planning, motor planning and sequencing, decreased in testosterone, fertility, impacts function um, of, of cells in, the, uh, in moving blood around our, our bodies, and cannabis suppresses and outperforms the natural God-given regulation system that he has given us. In other words, the natural, what they call endogenous cannabinoids in our system, cannot compete with what people are getting from the store uh, and the dispensaries. It, it, it suppresses and, and outperforms, which is not a, a good thing. Under 25, let me just sit on this for just a moment that I told the students, many things I told them on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, for people under 25, it has a, a very uh, bad effect on them. Uh, two times more likely, uh, people under 22 fi- are two times more likely to use cannabis chronically. They consider chronic use two times a week. Uh, 19 is the average age of initiating use. 20% of those who use it in that age range use it daily. It can accelerate the thinning of the gray matter uh, in the prefrontal cortex, which, which is a, a part of planning and so much a part of our development. And this is for people under 25. Uh, it has four times uh, increases the chance of psychosis for people to begin taking cannabis under the age um, of 25. Um, and so when I look at not just the reality of, it's not mentioned in scripture, although I've heard that, uh, it uh, was made by God, uh, and God said what he made was good. Uh, but again, not all things that God made are good for consumption and good for our bodies. And there are natural things in our bodies that cannabis interacts with neurologically, um, but that doesn't mean God created our bodies uh, for cannabis. It's a, it's a completely different thing. Um, I like some good diet Dr. Pepper. I like diet Dr. Pepper. Gina likes good diet Dr. Pepper. She can tell you which place in town gives you good diet Dr. Pepper and which gives you not so great Diet Dr. Pepper, okay? I, I like that. And I got to tell you, when I take in Diet Dr. Pepper or when I take in coffee, it interacts with my system, right? Uh, and it gives maybe me a bit uh, of a jolt, although I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm uh, maybe not so much anymore. Um, but we have the ability for many things to interact with our system. It doesn't mean it is good for us. Let me give us some principles to live by as it relates not just to cannabis, but all things that we consume and put in our system. First of all, your body is the temple. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. In other words, when you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit indwells you. Under the old law and and even in the time of Jesus, they would have the temple and the presence of the Lord remain there. Now as followers of Jesus Christ in a new covenant, the Holy Spirit indwells us. And there's there's several passages in Scripture that encourage us to care for our bodies, to consider what we're putting in our bodies, to examine how we're taking care of ourselves, that we're living in a good and honorable and healthy way, that these bodies are the temple of the Lord. And in other words, the Holy Spirit indwells our bodies like it did, the presence of the Lord did in the Old Testament prior to Christ. Romans 12, 1, right before what we read earlier, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. 
In other words, what is Paul telling us? What we do with our bodies is also important. How we live out our life, the thoughts that we are thinking, the words that we, are, that we say are a reflection or a way of worshiping God. And so in the New Testament, it kind of props up this idea that you should be caring for your body. It is, the Holy Spirit indwells us. It is how we worship the Lord now. It is no longer sacrificing animals. Uh, it's kind of an interesting idea in the Old Testament. I don't think anybody wants to have to bring a goat or a sheep, right, to church with them. Uh, nobody wants to clean up that mess afterwards. Uh, that our bodies are how we worship the Lord now. Our thoughts, behaviors, and I got to tell you, it's a constant battle. Um, at least it is for me. I, I can't vouch for you of, of how I'm treating my body and what I'm uh, uh, taking in and, and how I'm living out my life and how it affects my body, whether I'm exercising or not exercising or, or what I'm drinking and what I'm not drinking. Uh, last night we went to uh, Pablo's um, because we love Pablo's. And uh, we sat down, and I was hungry, and I was really thirsty, too. And, and I said, I want sweet tea. And they gave me a big old glass of sweet tea. And uh, I had the chips and the salsa and um, the um, queso as well. And I drank that big old glass of sweet tea. And then he got me another one really quick, and I drank another big glass of sweet tea. And by the time my food got there, my stu- I was just sick. I was sick. I just down, I mean, you know those glasses, they're, they don't want to have to refill them unless crazy people come in like me uh, that drink it really fast. Um, the reality is how we treat our bodies affect our bodies, sometimes in positive ways, sometimes in negative ways. And sometimes those things aren't quite clear, especially as it relates to many times medicines that we're putting on and things that we have to go through uh, uh, to ch- achieve health, whether it's working out and our body saying, please stop. Um, but it's something we should be considering regularly, that our bodies are a temple. It's how we worship the Lord. So I've got to test and approve things that are coming my way and how I'm living my life in such a way to make sure that I'm honoring God. So that's the first principle to live by, to remember that your body is the temple. The second thing, drunkenness is a sin and self-control is the standard. Drunkenness is a sin and self-control is the standard. Ephesians 5.18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Uh, do not get drunk on wine. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. In other words, allow the Holy Spirit to sustain you. Don't move to drunkenness. And a lot of times when I think of heavy drinking, I think of people trying to escape their reality or the world. And here the writer, Paul, is trying to say, hey, when you need help in life, don't move towards alcohol or substance to get through your day in the sense of a, a mental or a psychological struggle, but lean towards the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 1 says, 1, 7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Proverbs 25, 28, A man without self-control is like a city broken in two and left without walls. 1 Corinthians 9, 25, every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. One of the great themes of Scripture as a follower of Jesus Christ is we are constantly exercising and and working on our self-control. Things that we are saying no to, things that we get disciplined at saying yes to. Um, some of you, raise your hand if, if you've pretty much gone to church your whole life. Raise your hand if you've pretty much gone to church your whole life. Okay. It's all you've ever known, right? Going to church. I get up on Sunday morning. I get ready. I go to church. And maybe that routine changes as you get older. When I was a kid, I would wake up, and Mom would be blaring some Southern gospel, uh, like Top 40 Rick D's, you know, kind of uh, hit station going on. And, and we would listen to that, and, and then we would go out to the car with Dad, and and we'd wait on mom to finish and come out to the car and listen to dad say, dad gum that woman. And then we would get in the car and then we'd get to church early. And eventually I was in college and, and I went to church most days. But sometimes I worshiped at Bedside Baptist, which is a lot more convenient some mornings, uh, to be completely honest. Um, and then I started doing ministry and this was my job. You know what I mean? This is kind of expected that I'm going to be at, at church on Sundays. But what I find is, although m- maybe my life has changed, people that have never gone to church before, and although you're saying every Sunday morning you're to be at church, guess what that is? That's a discipline of something you have to say yes to. Reading your Bible, that's a discipline of something 
you need to say yes to. Prayer, a discipline of something you need to say yes to. So in self-control, we're talking about things we need to say yes to and things we need to say no to. But either way, this, this principle of self-control should guide us in, in, in life. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Of God. In other words, when you look at what you're doing and what you're not doing, what you're choosing to bring in your life, a good, a good barometer is this, is this glorifying the Lord. Am I glorifying the Lord in this thing? Now, I, I'm going to finish up with just a few things here, and this will be the last thing. So if you're sitting there and you're saying, he didn't say what I wanted him to say. <laughs> well, when you find, if you find it in Scripture, I'll say it, okay? A really important thing when it comes to Scripture is there are things that are directly addressed, right? We know who the Lord and Savior is. There's direct address of what we do and what we don't do. And there's things that are in, indirectly addressed and principles that, that should guide us. Um, and these two principles, I think, are really important principles to consider if somebody is thinking about uh, this area of cannabis and taking it in. And, and honestly, again, I stay away from the, what you and your doctor decide my mind really goes to people that are just using it recreationally and the problem that can bring in their life of just using it recreationally. And I think both discounting the arguments that people make and elevating some principles. Um, am I leaning on cannabis because of a lack of self-control? Am I leaning on cannabis because I'm trying to escape something that really the Holy Spirit wanted, wants to help and guide me through? Am I taking something into my body or into my system that is doing damage to me. Now, now let me just be completely non-hypocritical uh, about this. I am fully aware, fully aware that Oreos are not good for me. Okay? Can we admit that we're all, fit? this is a tension we're constantly working on, right? Of what's good for us and what's not good for us. But I got to be completely honest. The more I looked into the research uh, of cannabis and what was in that plant um, and and how much is in that plant? It's not just one single thing. There's two things I took from that. Man, I hope they really do. I know they have found that cannabis can actually help in certain areas, me medical areas. I get that. The science has shown those things. I hope that we continue to find great things that help people through real difficult times, especially health issues um, in their life. But the more I read on that, um, and listen to on that, I began to see more and more negatives of people just taking it recreationally and, and haphazardly taking it, whether it's chronically or in a, in a heavy way, especially parents and grandparents for people under the age of 25. Um, it's, it affects uh, people in a developmental way, and that's a critical time of development. I know we used to think people were fully developed at 18. They are not. It is more 25 and plus. And science has found that those uh, endogenous cannabinoids in your system and those receptors have a greater significance in younger ages. In other words, we believe that they're really important for development. For pe so people that are underage and replacing those naturally occurring things uh, with the uh, not natural aspect of introducing something different in your system that suppresses it or depresses it, it could be a, of critical of importance as it relates to uh, development. There's a practical side of it. Um, there's also the biblical side of it as well. And we wanted to address both those things. So let me finish with these three things. Um, we want to live our life in such a way and be in control of our life in such a way that we sense the will of God and the movement of the Spirit of God in our life, that he is constantly nudging us and directing us, right? Um, it would be great if when the Holy Spirit needed to tell me something, it just texted me. Um, on my phone, ding, uh, uh, you better go talk to this person, they need Jesus. That, that would be great, wouldn't it? Um, don't walk down that sidewalk, something uh, uh, difficult is going to happen for you, or make this decision, make that decision. The reality is the Holy Spirit simply nudges us. Uh, and the more, the, one of the reasons I believe Scripture uh, pushes against drunkenness, I think there are a lot of reasons, but one of them is it creates a lack of sensitivity to the nudging of the Holy Spirit and the ability to stay within um, the will of God. And so we want to be careful of things we place in our body that makes us insensitive to the, the moving of the Holy Spirit. We also want to be careful with things we place in our body um, that make us insensitivity in the ability to distinguish when Satan is attacking us or bring something not good into our life. 
and we want to ultimately trust God with our lives uh, and not seek um, in an unhealthy way to try to escape. Um, and I go back to that first uh, uh, Romans uh, there when it talks about the will of God and it lets us know that it is good and pleasing and perfect. We need to make sure we're living out our life in such a way that we make plenty of room for us to be within the will of God and experience that moment, that good and pleasing will of God. Okay, last little disclaimer. I don't know everything about this stuff. Um, and I'm finding more and more as I was researching it and on a limited basis, a lot of people don't know a lot of things about this stuff. We're still trying to figure these things out, okay? But I, we can look at Scripture and allow, us to gu- allow it to guide us. And I'll simply say this. I would encourage you to continue to dive into Scripture in all areas of your life and go, okay, what principle from Scripture can I apply to this area, even though the Bible doesn't specifically address this area, that we become, even through our analysis of cannabis, we begin to look at the Word of God, and we become know it more and more and more. We honor it more and more with our lives, and we use it to recognize both things that are good for us that God is bringing to our life and things that are not good for us for us. That would be what I hope we come out of today. Not simply say, well, it's this, even though we can look at scripture and see that that is uh, is problematic. Let's pray. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. Um, I thank you for um, even the opportunity just to dive into your word and try to figure out what is your Bible, what does the Bible have to say about this topic? Um, And if not directly addressing it, What are some principles we can bring to our life and and apply to our life? Dear God, and also just uh, to continue to walk and pursue holiness with you, uh, to pursue this idea of self-control in our life, to understand and honor our bodies as as the temple, as the way we worship you, Um, and not just in in this area of cannabis, but in all areas of our life, dear God. Um, Help us to become closer to you, each and every day to honor you more and more um, every day of our life. Um, and in a world where we're still sorting through some of this stuff and there's a lot of new stuff out there and we're trying to uh, filter what is good for us and what is not good for us, not just in this area, but in a lot of areas, dear God, help us to test and approve um, what is your will for our lives. We ask these things in your name and everybody says amen. Don't start playing yet. We're going to sing a song together. This really isn't a great altar call time, right? Um, now, if you need to give your life to Jesus, you, come on down. Okay, If you need to pray about something, come on down. But also fully aware that after you talk about cannabis and you roll down to the altar, you know what I'm saying, everybody can say, oh, yeah, there you go. Um, but so we're, we're going to sing together. If you need, I don't want to discourage you from coming down. You can come on down, okay? Uh, but here's what I wanted, I wanted to just finish on, okay? You probably have friends and family, right, that, that uh, um, you know, disagree with you on this. I think even in this area, it's really important that we are people of grace and that we are people of love, right? Um, That we don't push people away from Christ, but also that we're equipped with what the Word of God says and what what really science, what we've learned, even what little science has shown us, so that we can have uh, conversations and answer questions um, as it relates to this. So I pray that this is a blessing to you, but also encourage you further Bible study and further reading and really even further introspection. But let's... Let's stand and sing together.
Sermon's over. Can I just tell you, I don't think cannabis is good for our society, okay? Um, I want to make sure that's clear in the sense of recreational and the effect on it. You don't have to say amen, okay? I just think long term, we're going to see some negative effects. I didn't want to say my personal opinion in there right there. I'm, I worry about it. I really worry about it. And I pray it does some really good things medicinally for us but uh, that they figure out. But I, I really worry about that, and I worry about its effect on our state. And, uh, but that's my personal opinion. So if you want to know that, there you go. I didn't want to talk to 23, 40 different people asking me that. Um, but I, I think we are, need to be guided by the Word of God. Would you say amen to that? Okay, in all things that we do. All right, I think we're going to be guided by the Word of God and take up the offering this morning. Um, and so let's take up the offering. God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 